Hey guys, this is a new video series. As you can see by the title, it talks about applications of dynamic programming in economics. This is essentially a series of practice problems where we go through uh, problems which go and use uh, the Bellman equation and uh, use them in problems that you go and you see in recursive macroeconomics. Uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about the cake eating problem over a finite horizon. Let's go. So suppose you are someone deciding how to consume a cake over a finite time period, where t goes from period one, two, all the way to some terminal period t. In general, the sequential problem for the cake eating problem could be written as uh, the following, right? Which is maximizing uh, this uh, series of discounted uh, utilities from consumption, subject to uh, this consumption constraint, right? Which we can just sub in exactly right which is that's going to be equal to your cake size in period t minus uh the cake size which is going to be in period t plus one uh, alternatively we can rewrite this as uh your cake size in uh period t right which would be xt is going to be equal to uh your consumption in period t plus the your savings for the next period as in what portion of the cake you're going to leave over or what amount of cake you're going to leave over in the next period so we can write uh the previous uh sequential problem in terms of a bellman equation right this is from our principle of optimality um this is our value function which is a function of uh consumption at time t and the cake size or the saving in xt plus one which is something that we are controlled with is equal to this maximization problem of our instantaneous utility for, as a function of consumption plus beta right which is between zero and one this is a discounting parameter times our value function which is again a function that is maximizes uh x that maximizes uh this another value equation as a function of uh that cake size in the next period. So we can further rewrite this problem as the following, right? Making it only a function of uh, xt plus one, which is the cake size in the next period. The first order condition from this problem, even though we won't be utilizing it here, is the following below. So now let's go through a worked example. Consider a cake eating problem where our horizon is given over a fixed period of time and our consumers' preferences are given by uh, the utility from consumption in time t is equal to ln of ct. If our horizon for consumption of the cake is t being equal to periods 0, 1, and 2, what is the optimal investment in each period? Does a time invariant policy function exist for such a problem? So let's first solve the problem and we'll answer the second question. To solve this problem, we need to use backwards induction. Consider the functional equation of the last period, right? Which we have uh, V2 is equal to maximizing this Bellman equation where our choice variable is X3, right? Which is in the third period, which is the cake size in period three. We know that our horizon ends in period two, thus our cake in period three will be zero. Um, so simply put, right? This is just a matter of just working the algebra and plugging in zero here, we can say that our value function is at its optimum, right? When it's equal to ln x2. So using this result that we've derived, we consider period t is equal to one, right? We have our Bellman equation here and we can rewrite this using the knowledge that vx2 is equal to ln of x2. Taking our first order conditions of this problem, right? With respect to X2, which is what we are dealing with, right? We can go and solve for our optimal uh, cake size in period two, or the optimal amount that should be uh, saved for the next period as a function of period X1. If we go and we take that and sub it into our uh, value function for uh, our initial problem of period X1, we go and we get uh, this evaluated at its optimum point. So we now consider the value function at t equal to zero. Again, following the same pattern that we did before. 
rewriting this equation with the knowledge of what v star x1 is, we go and we get the following equation, right? We're just going and taking what our uh, value function in uh, x1 at its optimum would be, and we're just plugging it into what our value function should be in period x0, uh, right? Not x0, but period 0. And if we take our first order condition for it, we get a completely different uh, optimal value for what it should be in x1. So one thing we should note, though, is that we kind of have our answer to if there is a time invariant uh, policy functions here. You know, I didn't put this on the slides, but you should go in and see by just looking at these at these two val at these two values that time plays an important role in determining the, in determining the structure of the investment over here. So the, in this case, there are no uh, time invariant policy functions. Um, what this is because you know our problem is not is not stationary as it is with infinite hor horizon ones. I'm going to actually provide a link uh, to a question I asked on Stack Exchange, which will go into more details on that. So um, I hope this video helps, and uh, let me know if you have any criticisms or if I did anything wrong in the comments below. Take care.